Welcome to the Garage Gym Experiment podcast, where we dive deep into the home gym scene. Each week, we put out Sunday surveys where you tell us your thoughts on products, builds, and all things home gym related. We're here to break down the numbers at a talk shop. So thanks for listening, and let's get started. All right, Jason, what is surplus strength? You know, surplus strength started uh, from a sermon I heard at church uh, a few years back. And our pastor was talking about living a life of surplus and, and what that meant. And there, there was a parable that, that he spoke of in, in the Bible. And I won't go into all that religious business, but basically the idea of surplus strength is always having enough to share, always having more than you need. So that says you can give to others. So that's kind of where our hashtag life of surplus comes from, you know, training in a way that you're always going to get progression, training in a way that you'll have knowledge to share with others. And that, you know, surplus strength started as my training business. So it was always about me learning more than I needed for myself so that I could give that to others and always trying to make enough money so that I could give some to charity, you know, um, always having uh, enough equipment to share with people who wanted to come and work out with me. That's surplus strength in a nutshell. So making sure that you have enough so that you can give back. Very cool. And that's, that's, a, that's a mission that you can kind of carry on for years and years and years. Nice. All right. Lifelong um, goal for sure. <laughs> lifelong goal for sure, yeah. Um, all right. So we had you on uh, earlier in this year. We, we did chat a little bit about the surplus strength story. So through the rest of this podcast, we will definitely go a little bit deeper than we did last time. And then also last time we, we, we did a lot of like your personal home gym chat. So it's more, this one's going to be more about your story, your, the surplus strength story. And then like, what's to come, what's been happening recently, et cetera. Um, but to, to also start off, would you mind just giving us a little insight as to who you are, maybe some information outside of what you do for a living? Sure. I talked to my wife about this one because I, I guess I don't like looking back at myself very much. I was like, what do people need to know about, about me? And, uh, it, we, we landed on, um, family, you know, I am a hopeless family man. I talk to my parents several times a week. We see them, you know, at least once a week. Uh, my, my kids are, you know, involved with their grandparents. I love spending time with my family. On the weekends, you can find us outside doing activities. You can find us in the gym. And, and that's just my, my passion in life is, is really, really focused around family. Everything I do is to get a little more time with my kids. You know, I have a, a six-year-old son named Jacob and a 18-month-old daughter named Hallie. My beautiful wife, she's a nurse at, at Vanderbilt University Medical Center. And, you know, it's just basically dedicating every, every bit of time I have to them. Uh, we have a lot of fun together and we have a lot of, like, mutual interest i guess you say my wife's a big runner so like on our anniversary we go trail run or we'll race in a half marathon together uh my son loves to play hockey and it just turns out so do i so i get to take him to hockey uh, hiking with my daughter mountain biking with my son you know going to the pump track it's, it's just all about more time with family uh i still love to go shoot guns with my dad uh that's something that we really get into we've been uh hunting fishing camping doing the outdoors thing since I mean, as far back as I can remember, every birthday we did a big camping trip, uh, going on hunting trips, you know, building tree stands, uh, learning, you know, survival skills. Uh, I'm an Eagle Scout, and my dad was always a leader in my scout troop when I played baseball. He was always a coach, you know, played soccer, whatever. Was, uh, all these things, you know, family was always an integral part of my life, and that's just carried carried through, you know. And now I'm thankful to call my family much bigger because I have so many close friends that, that I, you know, hold true and, and dear as family. And, and that's something that's really important to me, that loyalty. So yeah, hopeless family, man. <laughs> awesome. Same. Um, but yeah. anyways, it was like seven, eight months ago, we chatted about, we, you told us, told Adam and I the story of, of surplus strength, but for those listening this time around, or, or it's been a while, I'd love to, rehear the story of the birth of surplus strength yeah i mean like as far as like the equipment side of it you know uh, left the job decided to pick up a at-home training you know career if you will uh had a big need 
in that time. And this was really the, the training business started pre 2020. And um, so I had established several clients. I was training, you know, five days a week out of, out of my home studio. Um, and I had it pretty nicely accommodated. Uh, I got a small space. I'm, I'm in a 20 by 18, you know, two car. And I didn't have room or money for a, a pulley system. I wanted something that would operate better than the, the spud ink system that I had, which was doing the trick on an economy, but not what it could be. The slinger was not interesting to me just because of the limitations and it putting it in front of an upright and not being able to move it around or take it off. And the cables through the rack just really, really turned me off. And I was like, what, what can be done? So I started drawing some pictures. I kind of come from a building like mechanical project management construction background. So uh, I had some friends. I started slapping some pieces of metal together and we came up with the very first prototype, which was welded on a truck bed while wearing Crocs. <laughs> and the most embarrassing welds I have ever made in my entire life were definitely on that prototype model. Shortly after that, I was... Uh, lucky enough to be introduced to uh, an engineer who had access to SolidWorks and a legitimate fabrication shop. I paid them to make drawings and uh, help me build three demos. Um, they mainly built the main channel that fits over the uh, three by three section of the power rack, which is the most critical uh, tolerance that we have in that. Adam from Garage Gym Lab still has one of the original models that didn't even have UHMW. So like it really mattered how far apart, getting those 90 degree bends just right, not splitting the metal when you bend it. I mean, all these problems that I didn't know anything about at the time. Um, so it was nice to have a partner that would make a small batch for me at a price that wouldn't break the bank. They made those channels. I actually hand cut the tubes for those still on a bandsaw and used a die grinder uh, at my buddy's fab shop. And he helped me weld those. And then we sent them off for professional power coating and sent them out. One went, did you get an original without UHMW as well? So you, you got one, Adam got one, and, and Coop got one. So, uh, and then just took your feedback from there. You know, we made changes from your feedback and from Coop's feedback and from Adam's as well. So you, you are the reason for the slot. Adam's the reason for the UHMW. Coop is the reason that it has a logo on both sides. Um, so it's got a little bit of everybody's touches on there and the feedback. During that time, it was important for us. I had reached out to a couple other guys, like Juji Mufu, believe it or not. I reached out to him, uh, and he was like, well, you need to get a patent immediately. I was like, well, that's pretty obvious, so let's, let's go ahead and do that. So we started with provisional patent. Uh, that gave us 12 months to say this is patent pending, to see how the market test would go and everything. Um, so basically, I started designing in March of 2020. Uh, had a viable prototype by June, and then we had demo units probably that September, October, I think is when I sent that out to y'all. And the provisional patent was filed that October. That gave us 12 months to say, you know, okay, let's do this. So in March, I felt secure enough to go ahead and release a pre-sale. We had a pretty good pre-sale. It was a two week wide open, 63 units uh, went sold. And again, I was such a small mind at this time. I was like, I oh, will sell 250 of these ever. And <laughs> You know, like here I said, we're like at almost 2,000 units in 17 countries, and it's just like mind-blowing. Now we've got like, you know, 20 products in our catalog. Uh, that'll be released, you know, periodically through the year. I'll talk about some of that later on. But, yeah, the, the UPS just kind of took off from there. So we took that pre-sale, uh, had all the work basically done out of house. So I had the, the cutting, the forming, the welding, and the powder coat all done out of house. We brought them in house. Uh, no custom boxes for the first batch of pre-sales. We just wrapped the shit out of them. <laughs> um, at first, it took about 16 minutes to assemble and box a UPS, which we quickly found out was completely unsustainable. I was hand-cutting cables. And when I say, I mean, I had a, a block fixture, a wooden block, that I was actually splicing the cables and peeling the casing off with a razor knife in my thumb. Um, <laughs> you got to do each cable twice. So 75K, yeah. that's 150. I had a big old hole in my thumb uh, from pushing mm. on the back of a razor blade. Uh, we hand swaged them like with a pump action, you know, swaging tool. And uh, we just learned a lot during that period. But yeah, it was, it was every invention is born out of necessity, right? So needed something that I could move around, take off my rack, 
uh, was a minimal footprint and gave smooth action, didn't swing the plates. The dual pulley system across the cross member kind of checked all those boxes. And it turns out it checked boxes for a lot of people. Awesome. That, that was it, man. That was, you know, uh, well, yeah. I guess the, the UPS low after that, you know, we had already put some, I had already put some thought behind the design for the UPS low. It took a little more prototyping, but like, as you'll see on our website, I still have the raw steel picture uh, as the product picture because those are the product photos I took because people were so desperate for that solution during the pandemic or right after, you know, early 2021 that I had to release it before it was even ready to really be released. So we got those pictures in raw steel, kind of the same thing with the, the Rhino UPS low that we just released earlier this week. I still, I, I just went and picked that steel up this morning. It's being welded as we speak. I don't even have a powder coated prototype of that yet. Um, I've just got the, the raw steel one. So, you know, it, it's just been, uh, the story of the UPS has really been like, the community speaks out and I deliver my best, uh, like as soon as I can. So. Awesome. Yeah. Just kind of learn as you go, <laughs> figure it out as you go. Um, cool. Well, I, I accidentally skipped a question too, that I was very curious about. So okay. how, so you mentioned earlier that you basically quit a corporate job. You went to training out, training others within your home. How long were you training at people, training people at home after leaving the corporate job before you stumbled upon this product that you started to create? Was it like a year or six months or? So I, I was a systems engineer at Vanderbilt. Uh, I did high tech healthcare. I did large scale software implementations for electronic medical records. I left Vanderbilt in October to start training people at home. I was still kind of training part time and helping a buddy's company out part time. And I had like four jobs until my daughter was born, like until March of 2021, I got to say, I mean, like I was developing this product. I was training, you know, 28 hours a week and doing, doing sales for my buddy's company, you know, 20 hours a week. So I was gotcha. literally working, you know, a hundred hours a week, but it was flexible enough that my wife who had a full-time job in nursing, uh, was able to work her nursing admin job, you know, 50 hours a week, uh, it was a pretty stressful job, but she was the breadwinner at the time, you know, and able to, to kind of carry the family while we built this, this business up. So I would say. And I moonlighted for almost two years solid. And honestly, like I, I trained two clients yesterday. You know, I still, I still have personal training clients because I want to stay viable in that space. You know, I want to continue right. learning. I still do my continued education credits. And I still think it's important to be a trainer so that we're making equipment that's usable. You know, we're not, we're not really here. Of course, we're here to be profitable because that's how you keep a business going. But it, it's more about making great solutions for us. Yeah. So I hope that answers your question. Yeah, it did. And then also you mentioned family as well um, earlier and the importance of them. Sometimes as an entrepreneur with you taking chances, it can mean it can put a little bit more stress on everybody and it requires a little bit more support maybe, or it can also go the other way around. So I'd be curious to hear how the, your family or if your family was supportive or if like it took a while for them to catch on um, to understand your vision or, uh, yeah, I'm just curious about, about that too. You know, I'm going to be careful here because I think my wife might listen in. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm really blessed, man. My wife is a 20 year, uh, nurse at Vanderbilt. She's been there 20 years. She has a master's degree from Vanderbilt nursing school. Uh, she had an amazing career when I met her. We've been married seven years. So we actually got married pretty late in life because we're both 40, you know, with, with tiny kids, right? And, um, it, it took a lot, man. You know, I, I stepped away from a nearly six figure position that had a retirement plan and, and benefits into something that was totally unproven. And I, I, I was blessed again because I picked up a lot of clients really early at a good rate. And, and she saw how, how hard I studied to get that certification which I, I have a NASM certification. It, it's at least a six month study. You know, the textbook is, is this thick. It's a two hour test. Um, and it, what, what I think is, is one of the gold standards for personal trainers. And so she kind of had like some inclination, but she didn't quite see where it could go. And then, uh, she was super pregnant when I was going to my, my buddy's fab shop at nine 30, 10 o'clock after I put my son down. 
and I was, you know, chopping on metal till two o'clock in the morning, a couple nights a week. And she didn't get that at all. <laughs> so I think the, the blue collar aspect of, of what we do is probably the hardest for her to understand because she comes from, you know, even though nursing could be considered blue collar at some level, she's been an administrator, you know, graduate degree. She kind of comes from a different side. And I was wearing a tie to work every day and then going and getting dirty and filthy. Like she just didn't understand it. Um, <laughs> but I think, at some point she kind of saw the fulfillment that I was getting and how much better of a husband and father I was able to be and, and the flexibility and put my family first. And that stuff started to sink in, especially after Hallie was born. I launched the free sale from the hospital <laughs> while we were having Hallie. <laughs> and uh, that was a little crazy, but it also gave me like a window to just like, okay, we're going to set the free sale up. I've done all this work leading up to it. We're going to let it run for two weeks. I'm going to come back to it in two weeks. So that's, that's what we did. Right. Um, and I came back to a lot of work to do because we didn't have warehouse space. We didn't have fulfillment set up. Like we didn't have any of that. So it was stressful for a long time, you know, trying to find the balance. Thankfully she was on maternity leave and worked in a place that she, she could do that. And, but you know, finances still, the bills still come in. Right. Um, so it was still really scary. We, we had planned for some things, but it just took me working even more in my training space and upping my clients, uh, trying to sell more for my buddy's sign company, uh, you know, whatever it took to kind of, because I, I saw the, the end game that, that this had. But I guess it was probably six months after we started selling them, I had gone through some real hardships with steel partners and things like that, you know, scrapping parts, not being able to live up to the, to the standards that, that we had in our designs and it got, it got really bleak for a little while and, and an investor came in and wanted to be a strategic partner. And it wasn't about making money for these guys. It was just about like, Hey, we see what you're trying to do. We want to be a part of your story. And when that, when that happened, when I took that partner on, like life kind of changed. Uh, and we were able to start thinking about growing and scaling and, you know, getting a new location. And, and so, yeah, that, I hope that shed a little light on, on your question. I, I started to ramble there for a second, but it, it without getting too specific, man, it was, it was hard as hell. It put a lot of stress on my family. It still puts stress on my family this day. I have, I have four full-time employees now. You know, my, my payroll is, is a lot. Our, our overhead went from, you know, nothing to 20 plus thousand dollars a month, you know, that we got to come up with it in profitability or, or we're, we're losing money, you know, and that's what it takes to scale a company. We were, we were talking to somebody the other day about uh, putting a bunch of racks in inventory. And, you know, the way we build racks, you know, if we wanted to put 50 racks in inventory, we're talking about sixty seventy five thousand dollars $75,000 in raw materials just to put that on the shelf. And that's, that's not something everybody has sitting around, you know. And, and even if you do, like, what if they don't sell? You know, is that the smartest move? Is that, is that what you're going to use your cash flow for? You know, I've never been a CEO, you know, I've never run a, a e-commerce company. Um, so that those, those learning phases, you just got to make sure you're protecting yourself at every level and you can only do so much. So it took a lot of self grace. It took a lot of grace from my family. My parents have been really supportive in all this and, and my business partners and my clients. So yeah, it just, it took a village. Right. Cool. That is awesome. Really cool. All right. So moving back to the story, um, I get, you mentioned, you know, pre-sales, you launched pre-sales went pretty well, but it was still a ton of work. Um, certain things weren't going exactly how you planned and et cetera. Um, curious to hear, but it sounds like you, you obviously made it past that you got rolling again. It sounds like that was about six months or so after maybe creating the product, if I had to like guess, or I'm sure it was somewhere around there, I guess, I guess I would say like, how, how did the next year go? So we released project in March of 2021 and basically like, okay, I, 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 here's a good turning point. So in August, uh, we, we started on a Squarespace website because that's what I knew how to build. I mean, this, this is such like a, a small company. I designed the logo, you know, and I never thought the logo would say, I really thought we'd do a rebrand by now, but 
everybody likes the logo. So like we've just kept it. Um, I designed the first website and, and did all that. In in August, we engaged with a company called Optio, uh, and they're out of San Diego. I'm sure you've heard of them. They work with tons of people that you heard of, Bam Hammers, uh, Plant Board. They just picked up Barbell Rescue, uh, all, all kinds of people. And they help do marketing, and they write all my ads and do all that stuff. They also built my first Shopify website. The Shopify model was a little hard for me to wrap my head around, even though I'm kind of a, a nerd. Um, just it, it was a lot having to do production and then think about building a new website. Uh, and I didn't know shit about ads. So that was something that was like mm -hmm. advertising. What are you talking about? It was a big leap of faith going with them, too, because they, they have a monthly retainer fee and they take a percentage of every sale that they create within their sales channel. And um, so when we got to August, like right, like that six month later point, I, I kind of had to make a big decision. So I, I sat down with the owner, Steve, and he made me feel really, really comfortable. He's got a great team. Um, they, I'm still with them. They just did the rebuild on the website. So if you've been on our website recently, you'll see yeah. that it's changed to more of an e-commerce platform. Uh, we have a lot more products on there. We're selling other people's products. Uh, and we wanted to simplify the website uh, to help with conversion rate. Another thing that I had never heard of before uh, I started doing all this, you know. So they have been an integral part. If you see my ad pop up on Instagram, that's Optio. They just, they do it all for me. Um, I, I don't do any of that stuff myself. I immediately doubled sales, like the first month we started using them, uh, right out the gate. So they've kind of carried me in growth month, growth month, growth month, like all the way through. They helped me like run all my sales. They're actually, the, the latest ads that just came out are for the pre-sale for the Arc Series Power Rack. So they're running those specials and setting up all the back end on the website to make sure that all those specials go through or if there's a discount code or free shipping or whatever we're doing uh, to make sure that we can actually deliver on those things from a user experience standpoint. That was the real turning point, you know, for the, for the company. That's when we were like, oh, so now we're actually, you know, making some money. I forgot where I was going with that, but. No, that, um, that's, that, that's great. Let me, let me stop you there and just yeah. say, um, about a month ago, I was on your website, um, randomly. I think I must've been there before, uh, you re you re or before you marketed the new website and I was like, Whoa, there's a lot here. Um, seeing a lot of different people's companies. Uh, or different companies' products, um, looks like specifically made in America um, type brands. But I'd be curious to just hear um, from you, um, where are you at in terms of your current business and all of the offerings that you have? You mentioned earlier trying to launch a bunch of racks. Um, so, yeah, if you could just explain where you're at there, that'd be awesome. Absolutely. Yeah, so we, we decided to... Um... We've had a lot of suggestions over the years uh, about how to do things. I think Basement Brandon was the first one to say, hey, like if you want to get your price point down, you should offer the UPS without hitch pins or without a loading pin or, you know, like make, make cheaper options. So we never really entertained that because the sales were coming in and it was just a distraction. Like we had a process, we were able to deliver on that process. And that's kind of how we had to execute our business plan. Um, so we weren't really open to a lot of change and it wasn't because we wanted to give a middle finger to anybody or it wasn't a good idea. It just wasn't something we were able to change and execute on well. So I wanted to keep on doing what we we're doing until we knew how to execute on these other ideas well. So some of the changes you'll see to our website is that we, we want to start offering uh, a more complete selection of products. So like, especially like attachments, like the belt fed strength, ultimate accessory strap, uh, things that hook hook on and like go well, you know, with our products, mm -hmm. um, the ab mat lineup, um, all the things that we use in our gym every single day, everything that you've been seeing in my videos for the last three years, if you followed me that long ago, you know, uh, I use a sand dune stepper every single day. I use an adroit landmine every single day. Like the, these are things that I use as training tools that are well built and I think are the best of the best. And so that's what we wanted to put forth because we feel like that's what our products do. And we wanted to partner with people who do the same thing. Um, Havoc Designs, you know, like there, there's several people on there, Barbell Rescue, the Rue Boxes, like just all, all these products that we just thought were phenomenal. And we didn't want to remake. 
I, I don't really have an interest in making a barbell right now. I'm trying to get Texas Power Bar to allow me to have a wholesale account so we can start selling the Texas Power Bar on our site. Um, I hope they don't say no because <laughs> I'd hate to have to replace all my, my bars. <laughs> and, uh, you know, like the, the belt fed strength stuff, it was a no brainer. I'm using all their stuff anyway. You know, their, their straps and, and, uh, the ultimate accessory strap, the, uh, all the clever built products and things like that. So it, it, it just made sense. Uh, so I reached out to all those people and had a conversation. Uh, and then like to round out the products again, like weight plates. Um, that's something we really want to do. Unfortunately, urethane bumper plates are really hard to do in the United States for a price that anyone can afford, uh, unless you're a D1 school and can buy American barbell stuff. So we did end up going overseas. Uh, we interviewed a couple manufacturers of urethane plates and got a few samples. And uh, I actually go pick up our second order of full urethane plates from the port uh, this week. So those are going fairly well. I don't know if you can see those in the background. They're high quality, they're uh, com competitive in the market, which we definitely wanted to stay competitive. We don't just want to be this bougie, you know, high priced company. And then like that moves me onto the power racks. We kind of teased the power racks last year. We weren't fully dedicated to the design that we had for both the four post and the six post. Kurt Locker, you know, uh, Kurt Stasbold, who I know y'all have had on the show. He was one of the first recipients of, of a big 100 inch four post rack and I'm sure you've seen it in his videos all the time. Um, he loves his rack, but there were some things that we could have changed. And so we took a lot of his feedback, some feedback from a couple other people in the market, some changes that like I noticed right away from a manufacturing standpoint that we needed to make. And uh, we hired an engineer of June this year. So this is why it's like such a lag because, you know, getting drawings that you can send to a, a steel cutter you have to have solid work drawings and all, you know, things that I'm, that's not what I do. So finally hired me this year, refined, refined, refined. We got to a place where we thought, okay, this is, this is the rack, you know, um, yeah. you've seen the renders. We're doing the giveaway for the garage gym competition this year. Uh, and we're really pleased with what we've got. So we're ready to start a pre-sale. We hope to be delivering those racks like right at the first of the year. Uh, and they're, they're ready to rock and roll. The six posts will be coming out. We're working on a half rack design. Uh, we've got a yoke in the hopper, a strongman yoke. That will be the absolute nicest strongman yoke you will ever find. And not just making it nicer, we're, we're doing features that, that really matter. Because that innovation is what really matters to us. Like, what's the user experience? Nobody else is doing welded nuts on, on their power racks. But, like, if you've ever put a power rack together, you'll know why we did welded nuts. Because mm -hmm. total pain in the ass to build a power rack. Plus, look how pretty they look, right? So they get powder coated. It's a beautiful finish. Uh, it's a seam, seamless top. Um, we'll have offset holes. You know, everybody's attachments will fit our stuff because I don't believe in the Apple model or, you know, doing stuff that's not to a standard. Three by three, one inch is our only offering right now, but we do have plans to move forward with a more economy uh, style rack in the future. Uh, so it's just, you know, navigating this first portion until we can get to that, that place. We, we don't want to make ourselves um, out of reach for everybody, uh, but we do want to make sure that we're delivering the highest quality product that we can. Um, and that, that costs money sometimes. So, well, in the U.S., it always costs money. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, just trying to round out our offering, have a one-stop place for people uh, to outfit, you know, the, the highest quality American-made products that we can. Very cool. Um... So you mentioned some other, pro you mentioned some AdMat products, I think Cleva Belt, um, Belt Fed, Clo or uh, Havoc. Was there any, anyone else or anything else uh, that you would want to mention here? Or was yeah, that, does um, that pretty much cover it? Yeah, that, that, that pretty much covers it right now. Um, the, the Breath Belt is, is on there too, a product, again, Breath that belt. we really, really believe in and we use daily. I'm probably missing somebody, so if I am, I'm really, really sorry in advance. Um, <laughs> that, but it, it's it's fun because we get to talk to a lot of other small manufacturers on a, on a regular basis, and and see if there's any chance to collaborate with those guys. And it doesn't always work out, but sometimes it does. You know, business is hard, and I think during the pandemic and with the the growth of home gym the way it was so fast, a lot of people were like, "Oh, we'll just get into this, and you know, anybody can do it." And that's just 
it's not really the case, you know, and I think a lot of yeah. people are finding out the hard way. You can't stay well, on pre-sale forever. You're going to have to sink some money into inventory and talking about the cast iron plates, you know, that, that's a great design that we've got and we think they're going to be really successful, but just to get the tooling to make five plate molds is a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> Dang. Dang. So like before you make a single plate, you're, you're a hundred K in the hole. So Jeez. my kids, well, high school. <laughs> like, yeah. right. Well, well, let me ask you this. So you, you, yeah. you, you create, started with one product going into it. You're like, yeah, maybe this will work. Um, but after a little bit of success, did you see this coming? Like all of this all in one store where you can basically pretty much, um, create an entire home gym. Um, like, was that the vision all along or did that just recently happen? No, man. I think when I made the UPS, I was still thinking that I would just be a personal trainer, uh, and maybe okay. create an app, you know, program in some AI. I'm still like in my nerdy, you know, systems engineer mindset. And I think it really, until I was welding the units myself regularly because there was a six month period where I welded every single unit and I loved it. I love getting my hands dirty. I love building stuff. I love cutting metal. Um, I love seeing something go from a sketch pad in, into a finished product. And I found so much fulfillment from there. I was like, man, when I sat in that first engineer's office, when I, when I got those demos made, uh, the, the engineer's name is Richard. Richard, he's still a good friend of mine. And he, he said, well, why don't you make racks, Jason? And I go, <laughs> well, I don't know why we don't make racks, Richard. I couldn't answer the question. And I, I, that haunted me for a long time. But no, I never thought we would be here. I never thought we'd be selling equipment. And it's really just been like, hey, do I have enough gratitude to start my day uh, and, and figure out what God has next for? It's being open to, you know, and I don't want to get too spiritual on this, but, you know, like, I really do believe that we were created and that you have to be open to a plan for it to really bloom and become everything that it could be. Um, so it, it really has just been like, let's get open, protect ourselves where we can and, and take risks. You know, if you want to walk on water, you got to get out of the boat. So that's, that's what we did, man. I, I jumped out of the boat and so far it's, it's working out. Very cool. All right, let's uh, let's let's chat some kind of one-offs. Um, yeah. What does your day-to-day -day look like these days? These days, uh, I'll I'll give you a rundown of yesterday and and today because uh, like Monday, Wednesday, Friday is a little different for me because I'm still training Monday, Wednesday, Friday afternoons. I train clients. Um, Tuesdays and Thursdays are kind of my long day. We recently, well. In June, we moved from downtown Nashville to Centerville, which is about 40 miles west of Nashville. Uh, so it's a good 45, 50 minute drive for me in, in the morning to get out to our current warehouse. But it's a third of the price of, right. of warehouse yeah. space in downtown. So it was really the only viable solution for us. So like this morning though, I had to drive down to Lewisburg, about an hour and 15 minute drive. Uh, I picked up steel there for the new Rhino Lowe's. I then had to go over to Kingdom Strength Studio in Columbia, which is about 35 minutes from there, uh, and drop off uh, an Atlas handle that Craig from Kingdom Strength uh, bought. And I wanted to see his full build out. He's got a set of our dumbbells there. Uh, he's a former UPS owner. He's got a, a lap tower now. because He's got a commercial gym. Um, and, and talk to him about uh, a couple of one-off products that he wants us to make for him as well. And then I took another hour drive up to Centerville and uh, dropped off at the, uh, at the welding table, ran around, got this podcast set up in the gym. And uh, the rest of the afternoon, I'll just be working on getting these Rhino lows knocked out and, uh, you know, got some computers, some admin stuff to take care of. So that's like Tuesdays and Thursdays. I'm seven in the morning till five when I get home. And then it's family time for a couple hours. And then might hang out with the wife for an hour and turn the laptop on when she goes to bed at 8 30 uh and some nights i stay up till midnight you know just just working on stuff wednesdays you know uh i usually take my kids to school because it's my short day uh if i have to come out to the warehouse i do but sometimes i like to work from home and then i start training clients around one o'clock in the afternoon until about 5 p.m 
Uh, so I'll, I'll train those clients, uh, and I got to get a workout in somewhere in between there too. So just however that works out. Um, yeah. And then the weekends are just nonstop family time. So, uh, yeah, just running and gunning all the time. Got it. As I expected. Um, so what's, what's your, I guess just thinking back to like your old line of work, um, in healthcare and like technology, basically, I mean, obviously some of that still applies, but within this industry and doing what you're doing, what's your favorite part of it? My favorite part of the industry, um, is I, I think it's the customers. I still like customer interaction. You know, I really like people. That's not to say that every interaction I have with, with a customer, but this customer is good. Uh, cause that's definitely not the case, but the, the people is still what keeps me going. You know, I, I get emails, man, this is the perfect solution for me. You know, it's super smooth. It fit just right. Yada, yada, yada. I love this. And even when people typically, when people send me a problem, they're like, Hey, I think I got the wrong lead table or I'm having this issue. They start out with some kind of kudos or something nice to say. And, you know, maybe it's a shit sandwich where you put the shit in the middle. <laughs> you start with yeah. something good in with something good, but mm-hmm. it, it's still, they're very grateful. And I mean, it just gives me such a reassurance, especially in the world that we live in today, that people are overall good um, and that they want to be kind to each other. And it's really encouraging to have a, a customer base that, that has been so kind and supportive. You know, uh, <laughs> Joey from Garage Gym Junkies, we were, we were messaging back and forth this morning. You know, he's a former Marine fucking goon. And uh, we just like, you know, giving each other shit back and forth and just that, that camaraderie and that, that brotherhood. Uh, yesterday, I uh, had my wife and, and her good friend and a, and a fellow personal trainer, you know, in the gym training on International Women's Fitness Day. Like, that, those are just opportunities I never thought I would have, you know. Um, it, it's really special. Uh, that and, you know, owning your own business, even though it is a lot of time, um, this business especially is more of a lifestyle business. You know, it's not like I'm set up to be trading stocks from this hour to this hour and I got to be on the clock. No, like I told my wife the other day, I was like, if you're running late, like I'll take the kids. I can, you know, push off this pickup 30 minutes. You know, I don't have to be there right when they open. Um, and so that, that flexibility as well, because fitness is a lifestyle for us, you know? And, and so, yeah, those, those are, that's my favorite part. People and lifestyle, being able to live a life dedicated to longevity, health, fitness, movement, uh, and, and helping people get better. Awesome. I, I mean, I would, I would also say like the, the amount of good apples in this like industry that we kind of work in versus bad apples is like 10 to one, you know, there's, there's a lot of really solid people in this, in this, uh, in this in like the home gym scene it's it's pretty cool and they're, they're all pretty like-minded for the most part so yeah that was that was cool to hear uh i would be curious to hear based off of somebody i like i'm somebody who you know you work in a really competitive kind of space the lat lat pull down slash low row obviously you have more but you kind of started with the ups there's it's a competitive space and there's things there's different options and a variety of different price ranges. And, you know, if you have a certain rack, one option may be better for you than the other. Uh, so I'd be curious to hear specifically from you, who's somebody that could, that should consider a UPS versus somebody that should not. So it's going to be like an obvious choice for somebody who has low ceiling. Like it's, it's a no brainer. Um, someone who needs, uh, a dynamic solution. Chip Birdie is a really good uh, example. You know, <clears throat> he uses his UPS on the side and on the front. He uses it for supersetting, like he figured out how to do bell squats on it. And so somebody who needs a simple solution that they can get multiple exercises out of, it's, it's a really good solution. An example is somebody like the UPS low isn't optimized for flat foot racks. So if somebody is willing to add a cross member above the flat foot, they can absolutely use a UPS low, but it may not be the best option for them. A DIY solution may work better for them. Somebody who is uh, wants to buy once, cry once, that's probably the biggest requirement because you know we're, we're not the cheapest solution, uh, but you'll never have to replace our equipment. If you own a Rhino, 
it's a no brainer. I mean, it's got to be the best combo since peanut butter and jelly. Um, it, it, you can get more functionality out of a 24 or 30 inch deep four post with a drop in Rhino and a UPS and a landmine than any other setup that I've found, you know, unless you want to buy like a prime HLP selectorized rack and spend, you know, $7,000. So, right. uh, you know, for, for the money and the footprint, um, that, that's really people, people who want to have the best solution in the smallest footprint. That's who's probably the most ideal UPS customer. Awesome. Yeah. And then, and then you work closely with a lot of people in the industry as well. And we, you've even been on round tables with them. Um, so I'd love to hear just like, and it doesn't have to be them. It could be people from the past, people from the present, but who are some inventors or just people that work in the industry that have inspired you or helped you along the way or what it, take this however you'd like. So I'm probably going to name a few names here because I've, I've got a lot of crushes on a lot of, a lot of folks in this industry. Um, and I've been fortunate enough to be able to work with them and talk to them and create friendships. Steve Club is at the top of that list. Club Build, I think everybody's pretty familiar with his solutions by now. They're, they're elegant, they're simple, they're well built, they're well thought out. He has a manufacturing background and he is a wealth of knowledge. Not to mention he's a wizard fucking welder. I mean, <laughs> you should, if you have an adroit landmine, you should just look at the bottom of that cup and know that he welded that by hand. It's beautiful. Uh, that's really hard to do. He is so willing to give of himself. And he reached out to me, you know, after I pinged him and was like, hey, well, have you thought about doing it this way? Have you thought about saving money this way? You want me to throw, you know, a bid packet to, to some of my guys here in Arizona? And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, you don't even know me, man. And, and mm -hmm. again, Sierra, too. Like, they just, they lead with love. And, and, it's, and it's really, really uh, refreshing and nice to have not competitors, but people who are in the same space as you, you know, who don't really owe you anything, don't have anything to make to, to like try and lend you a hand. D from Havoc Designs is an, is another one of those guys that's just been awfully generous and, and willing to, to give his knowledge to me and, um, and collaborate on things and always looking for opportunities to work together. I speak to him probably weekly. Uh, we're working on some things now. You may see some of his stuff pop up in my store really soon. Uh, and, and also some of his other partners. Um, so, and, and I feel like it's, it's mutual too, because I'm able to give back a little bit to those guys now when I can. And, you know, if it's not just patronage, it's, it's sharing me using their products and, and the benefits of those things uh, and, and talking to other people about the product. Because I feel like while I don't consider myself an influencer, I feel like I have an influence over a, a certain crowd of people. And a lot of people do come to me for advice. I'm like, well, hey, this is the problem I'm having. This is what I'm looking at. What do you think of, of this? And so I give my honest opinion. Um, and if something doesn't work, I just, you won't find me using it. Um, that doesn't mean that I don't have three or four of the same solution from three companies that work great, but they're all a little different, you know, bell fed strength, uh, Chris and Randy, they, they become like family and they've made two custom belts for me now that they just absolutely knocked out of the park. The last one that Randy did, she, she drew, uh, an original pinup of my wife, uh, on my belt and put our birth month colors and the roses and. And the planes that my grandfather flew, you know, uh, on, on the front of the belt. And it's just like, that belt means so much to me, you know. And it's just really special how they love on the community and the fact that they compete. And we did the Nashville, or the Music City Fit Expo together. And we did a deadlift competition, did all this crazy shit. Chris pulled 635 off the platform, you know, no problem. I think he was wearing shorts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just real, real people that, that lift and, and live in this life that, that we all, that we all love from an invention standpoint, uh, you know, Dylan at Admat, of course, has been, I probably bothered the shit out of him. So I'm sorry, Dylan. Um, he's been extremely helpful, especially in some of the more recent projects that we worked on. Uh, and I'll probably get into some of that we worked on here down the road in just a second, but, um. Yeah, I mean, just seeing the way he runs his business and all the things that I've learned from, about e-commerce through him and the market space from a business standpoint. Because, you know, that, that CEO hat, that, that, that salesman hat has been more difficult to wear for me than, than just slapping metal together. Uh, but I've learned a ton from him. and He's always willing to chat. He's really easy to get in touch with. And I think everyone who's dealt with him would probably say the same thing. And, and to see the way he loves on inventors is 
is really cool because he's making a, a pathway for some great innovation in the space. From uh, a competitor that I probably look up to in the space mostly is uh, Sorenet. You know, I recently learned uh, on the Home Gym History podcast, I listened to the, the history of the power rack this morning, uh, and Bob, Bob Peters, Tennessee, is the birthplace mm-hmm. of the power rack. The power rack was invented in Tennessee, and we're going to bring it back to Tennessee, <laughs> you know, with the art series. But awesome. um, a- as we move forward, we're not chasing rogue. I'm not trying to sell every single product. I'm trying to create a curated space of the highest quality products. And I also want to bring these solutions to institutions. So we're currently speaking with several of the local private high schools about building out their gyms. And so, you know, seeing the solutions that Sorenex builds, like, I don't know if you've ever seen Oregon's weight room or like oh, Citadel or like. They're insane. Entities. They're insane. They're insane. That is setting the bar really high. And, and I plan to, to achieve and, and overcome that bar, you know, so from, from a looking up standpoint, I would say Sorenex is probably, probably that golden goose. Gotcha. Um, yeah, the, the, it's definitely nice to have s- competitors that are just so high because it shows you kind of where you can, you actually can go. Yeah. I think it, n- nobody has anything but respect for what Sorenex has done and, they've kind of, they have taken it to the next level. So just kind of on that trajectory, would love to hear either the next phase of business for you, you kind of touched on it, or just where you see your business in five years or so. So again, part of being open to God's plan was seeing business opportunities that I wouldn't have normally had set out in my business plan. You know, the the linear, the linear plan is to scale products, expand the catalog, you know, sell the same things that other people are selling. Um, and, and what I didn't foresee was a pivot into designing and manufacturing equipment for other people who had a niche that they wanted to sell. So we've been working with Ben Patrick recently from, he, he's the knees over toes guy, um, athletic truth group, and he is starting a line of American made equipment. And we're glad to be building his the first American-made folding home back extension. So I've been working on this for months, and it's the first time I've really been able to talk about it. So we finally got a good deal down. I think those will probably go on sale in December through uh, atgequipment.com. So we're white labeling those products for him. Um, We're really proud of the design. It is not the junk that you buy off Amazon. This thing's sturdy, you can load it up. Um, It has three different positions. It folds completely flat, so it can be stowed away. It comes fully assembled. And, and we're really, really proud of the product. It's, it's made right here in Tennessee, you know, uh, we'll, be, and it, we'll be welding them up like 20 feet behind me. <laughs> so is it wall mounted or no? No. So it's a back extension. Oh, so it actually cool. folds down and then comes up so you can do your 45, a 30 and a 50 degree angle. Oh, nice. For your back cool. extensions. Yeah. So, uh, re- really, really exciting. Of course, cause that's his niche, you know, having a back extension. Uh, and we're working on a couple other products with him now. I can't, can't talk about those yet uh, because they're not quite ready. But, you know, being back in that prototype phase and taking it from a whiteboard to a product laying on the ground, um, really exciting for me. So uh, not where I saw our business going or where I saw us heading, but definitely I think it'll be lucrative for him and and our business. And it'll allow us to scale so that we can be in a better position to deliver on our new products that are surplus strength as well. So the, the more that we're manufacturing here, the more that I can build infrastructure, you know, even just buying pallet racking, you know, that's six to $10,000, like every time you do it and like add an employee, you know, that's a few thousand dollars a month. Um, so any, anything we can do to kind of support our processes is, is what we're open to. So excited for the opportunity to be working with him on, on several products. Yeah. And it sounds like a product that a lot of people need and it would ultimately help them. Did you, uh, were you able to expand on the ab mat thing you were talking about earlier too? Or is that so still kind that of. That was part of it. So um, the oh, okay. for for that piece of equipment, the leg pads, they're going to be molded ab mat foam uh, like you'd find in their, in their medicine balls. Um, not stitched vinyl, not squid. It'll be fully supportive. Um, again, he, he likes to load a 45 degree back extension, you know, with 65, 70 pounds. So like a guy like me, I'm two, I'm 200 pounds. Had. 65 pounds onto that and start doing back extensions, 
if you do that on a $175 back extension that you got on Amazon, it can either fold up or you're going to feel it rocking and swaying and flexing. And there's, there's none of that going on on ours. It's, it's, it's built for athletes. Got it. So, uh, partnering, partnering with, uh, Abmat to get the leg rollers formed and the leg pads. The next product we're making has a pad as well. That will be all molded foam. Uh, and that, you know, injection molding is, is the future. I, I know Steve alluded to some of the stuff he's working with Dylan on and doing injection molded. And the things that Dylan has figured out around not only molding plastics and foams, but like molding metal, you know, doing uh, cast aluminum. And I can't even remember the name of the product, but it's, it's a type of plastic that has like metal inside of it that's even stronger than aluminum, but they can mold it. There's just all kinds of technology out there that, that he has access to that's, that's making the lives of some of us in the space a lot easier. So mm -hmm. glad to share the business with him, of course, right? Um, yeah, so like I said, it's every, everybody's getting a little a little piece of that, which is really nice. Yeah, a lot of potential with that. But anyways, that's that's all I have. Looking forward to seeing how these racks turn out and yeah, to see uh, how... Uh, quick Quick plug on that. So yes, go for ahead. Arc Series Tower Rack, October 1st through 15th. Uh, the first 25 orders are going to get a custom nameplate for free and free shipping on their Power Rack. Um, the standard setup for the Power Racks, they come with our uh, two-inch sandwich J-cup. Uh, you can add the drop-in safeties and spotter arms to that for, for an upcharge. So um, we will be offering some standard colors. Uh, I'm not sure we're going to offer custom colors just yet just because we're trying to keep it kind of simple, stupid, uh, and make sure that we can deliver the highest quality product available. Um, the Juggernaut AI rack that will be given away during the Garage Gym competition. If you're not signed up, please go and sign up. Everybody has the same chance to win that rack, no matter if you pull 85 or 405 on your deadlift. And we have a giveaway coming up with Garage Gym Experiment, right? We're going to be giving away a custom uh, UPS that will be uh, one of a kind, red and black. And let me uh, let me grab this other thing. Let's we'll go ahead and tease this for the people who are watching. And this uh, beautiful red and black Gator beautiful. Ultimate Accessory Strap. Uh, so that'll be going along with it. So make sure to stay tuned to Garage Gym Experiment, Belt Fed Strength, and Surplus Strength on Instagram about more details on this giveaway that'll be coming in the next week or so. All right, awesome. Uh, that, that's it, that's all the plugs I have. I had to get that out. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll, uh, I'll end it. That's going to do it. Thanks hey, again, thanks, Jason. Jake, I appreciate you having me.